How's it going, people? Doing great. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Found this at a thrift store. I thought that was kind of neat. It's my new martini glass. You can actually see bubbles and imperfections in, in it. Yeah, just a solid base, but full of bubbles. Anyway, I am going to make my first martini up here on Mount Hope. Already put some ice in here. And start with a little extra dry gin. This is a new martini mixer. The other one was metal, and uh, I was getting frostbite with it. <laughs> I took it camping. Martinis camping. Not really a great match. Uh, spent a lot of time passed out in my tent. Uh, and it's so damn cold up there, and here I am. Yeah. They were a hit, though. Everybody had to have at least one. <laughs> one of my friends had like six. Okay, and a uh, little extra dry vermouth. And about a half a measure. Yeah. And I've already put ice in it. So, see, it's like a, a thermos. That metal thing, man, it got cold fast. Uh, and I've speared a couple of green olives in advance. <sighs> okay. Starting one tradition and continuing another. I had to finally do another section. Ooh. Now it's got bits of ice in it. I had the uh, gin in the freezer too. Okay. Section 112 of the DNC. Let's read the masthead. Revelation. Given through Joseph Smith the prophet to Thomas B. Marsh at Kirtland, Ohio, July 23rd, 1837. Uh, 1837. Sorry, a little dyslexia there. I managed to manage with it anyway. Ah, the word of the Lord unto Thomas B. Marsh. Wait, wait. The word of the Lord. Unto Thomas P. B. March, concerning the twelve apostles of the Lamb, the prophet records that this revelation was received on the day on which the gospel was first preached in England. Spreading the disease. Ooh. Thomas B. March, uh, Marsh. Uh, was at this time president of the uh, Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. The Twelve to send the gospel abroad among all nations. They are to act under the direction of the First Presidency. Others may be authorized by the Twelve for ministry among the nations, the key of power in the priesthood uh, committed to the First Presidency and the Twelve. Uh, the present designated as a dispensation of the fullness of times. This sounds like it's just crackling with high intensity action. <sighs> D. 
damn good martini, though. One. Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Thomas, I have heard thy prayers. He was listening quietly. <laughs> He's always doing that. Uh, and thine alms have come up as a memorial before me in behalf of those thy brethren who were chosen to bear testimony of my name and to send it abroad among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, and ordained through the instrumentality uh, of my servants. Okay. <coughs> Two. Verily, I say unto you, there have been some few things in thine heart and with thee, with which I, the Lord, am not well pleased. Now that's a surprise. Three. Nevertheless, inasmuch as thou hast abased thyself, thou shalt be exalted. Good groveling. Therefore, all thine sins are forgiven thee. Every one of them. Clean slate. Four. Let thy heart be of good cheer. Since you insist. Oh, that's the spirit. Might have to make another before this video is done. How long is this? Eh, not too bad. Let thy heart be of good cheer before my face. That's God. Okay. And thou shalt bear record of my name, not only unto the Gentiles, but also unto the Jews, if you can find any, uh, in Missouri and Ohio. Yeah. Um, and thou shalt send forth my word unto the ends of the earth, because we all know that a you know, there's all, look at all these different corners, you know, all ends of the earth. <sighs> okay. Five. Uh, contend thou, therefore, morning by morning and day after day, let thy warning voice go forth. And when the night cometh, let not the inhabitants of the earth slumber because of thy speech. Isn't that what Jim Jones did? Nobody ever got any sleep because he was constantly, constantly bombing them with his droning voice until it burrowed into their brain. But this is different. They're not isolated and indoctrinated in a cult with charismatic leaders, right? Different. This is not Jonestown. A little different. A little uh, six, let thy habitation be known in Zion, and remove not thy house, for I, the Lord, have a great work for thee to do in publishing my name among the children of men. Seven, therefore, gird up thy loins for the work. Let thy feet be shod also. Does he need to see a blacksmith, or can he just use regular shoes? I mean, <laughs> yeah, wear shoes. Good thing he mentioned that. He might not have done it otherwise. <sighs> okay, sorry. Uh. thy feet be shod also <laughs> for thou art chosen and thy path lieth among the mountains and among many nations eight and by thy word many high ones shall be brought low you're a Debbie Downer aren't you 
You're a little too high. Let me bring you down. <sighs> Just the kind of guy you want to invite to a party. <sighs> and by thy word, many low ones shall be exalted. Because, you know, misery loves company. to make another one. This is, chapter's dragging on too long. All right. Nine. Thy voice shall be a rebuke unto the transgressor. And at thy rebuke, let the tongue of the slanderer cease its perversiveness. Ten. Be thou humble, and the Lord thy God shall lead thee by the hand and give thee answer to thy prayers. Humble yet surprisingly arrogant at the same time. It's a strange little uh, little mixture there, you know. You know, like oil and vinegar, you just have to keep shaking it. You know, like I do my martinis. Which I need another one. Excuse me. A little intermission here. The ice is still okay. See why I don't do these very often? <laughs> these DNC, DNC readings. Oh, that's a little bit stronger than the last one. Yeah. But what the heck, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. And I'm going to eat, so. <laughs> Eleven, I know thy heart, and have heard thy prayers concerning thy brethren. Be not partial towards them in love ab above many things, but let thy love be as for them as for thyself, and let thy love abound unto all men and unto all those who love my name. <sighs> Having a hell of a time, my dear. Wish you were here. Hmm. <laughs> that helps. All right. Twelve. And pray for thy brethren of the twelve. Admonish them sharply for my name's sake. And let them be admonished. Because they're probably guilty of something for all their sins. And be ye faithful before me unto my name. 13. And after thy temptations, wait, and after their temptations, I, I the Lord, will feel after them. And if they harden not their hearts, and stiffen not their necks against me. They shall be converted, and I will heal them with a mighty washing of the brain. <laughs> 14. Now, I say unto you, and what I say unto you, I say unto all the twelve. He's kind of forgot to do the Elizabethan uh, King Ed, you know, King James speech here. You know, all of a sudden it sounds a little too modern. Okay, I'm sure he'll fix that as soon as he realizes he's doing it. They shall be converted. And I will heal them. Uh, now I say unto you, 14, uh, what I say unto you, now I say unto you, and what I say unto you, I say unto all the twelve. Arise and gird up your loins. Could have said thy right there, it sounded better. Uh, 
take up your cross and cherry pick some more verses and sayings from the King James Bible. <sighs> Follow me and feed my sheep. Don't forget that. And it's not an insult to be called a sheep if you're a sheeple. 15. Exalt not yourselves, or thyselves. I'm helping. Uh, rebel not against my servant Joseph, for verily I say unto you, I am with him. <laughs> He's in those magic rocks. He keeps in his hat. Uh, and my hand shall be over him. And the keys which I have given unto him, and also unto you, uh, uh, wait. And also to you word, <laughs> shall not be taken from him till I come. Which, you know, I mean, still hasn't done that yet, so I guess Joseph Smith's alive somewhere with, uh, with the holy keys. Okay, um, 16. Verily I say unto you, my servant Thomas, art thou, oh, he's, gotten a, he's gotten a speech back, the man whom I have chosen to hold the keys of my kingdom as pertaining to the twelve abroad among all nations, that thou mayest be my servant to unlock the door of the kingdom in all places where my servant Joseph and my servant Sidney and my servant servant Hiram cannot come. Eighteen. For on them I have the burden of all the churches for a little season. And a lot of tithes. Nineteen. Wherefore, whithersoever they shall send you, go ye. And I will be with you, and in whatsoever place ye, see, we're back to Shakespearean, ye shall proclaim my name, an effectual door shall be opened unto you, that they may receive my word. 20. Whosoever receiveth my word receiveth me. And whosoever receiveth me receiveth those, the first presidency, whom I have sent, whom I have made counselors for my name's sake unto you. 21. And again I say unto you, that whosoever ye shall send in my name, by the voice of your brethren, the twelve duly recommended and authorized by you, shall have power to open the door of my kingdom unto any nation, whithersoever ye shall send them. 22. Inasmuch as they shall humble themselves before me, and abide in my word, and hearken to the voice of my spirit. <sighs> Sorry, lost my place. 23. <laughs> verily, verily. I drink to those. I say unto you, darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness the minds of the people, and all flesh has become corrupt before my face. Again. 
24. Behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth. A day of wrath, a day of burning, a day of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, and of lamentation. And as a whirlwind, it shall come upon all the face of the earth, saith the Lord. So there you go, stamp that. Mark your calendar. Just mark the whole thing. They don't give dates of when this shit's going to happen. That would be really impressive. Twenty-five, And upon my house shall it begin, and from my house shall it go forth, saith the Lord. 26. First among those among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name and have not known me, and have blasphemed against me in the midst of my house, saith the Lord. Thought he didn't know about that, huh? 27. Therefore, see to it that ye trouble not yourselves concerning the affairs of my church. In this place, saith the Lord. 28. But purify your hearts before me, and then go ye unto all the world and preach my gospel unto every creature. Who has not received it? Received it. <laughs> Sorry. Twenty-nine. And it sh and he that believeth and is baptized. Can you like wait till you're after you're dead and have Mitt Romney do it for you? <laughs> uh. That believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not and is not baptized shall be damned. You got to do both of those things. So you can't just, you know, take the one step. Thirty. And unto you the twelve, those the first presidency who are appointed with you to be your counselors and your leaders. It is the power of this priesthood given for the last days and for the last time in the which is the dispensation of the fullness of times. And that's what, 1837? It's still almost happening. Soon. In the future somewhere. Probably. <sighs> 31. Which power you hold in connection with all those who have received a dispensation at any time from the beginning of the creation of something? Maybe everything. I don't know. They didn't say it's not capitalized creation. 32. For verily, I say unto you, the keys, the keys of the dispensation which ye have received have come down from the fathers, and the last of all being sent down from the heaven before unto you. The last ones. Because, you know, we're there in the last generation all those years back and all those generations ago. Yeah. That's why you got to believe it. Is, you know, doesn't that prove something? I don't know. 33. Verily I say unto you, Behold how great is your calling. Cleanse your hearts and your garments, lest the blood of this generation be required at your hands. 
That's kind of scary. Isn't that what ISIS is saying? That, you know, it's you know, required of them, the blood of other people. And it's generation. Thirty-four. Be faithful until I come. For I quick come quickly. Not me, him. I think of baseball. Um, and my reward is with me to recompense, 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 recompense every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. Amen. And that's, wow. I don't know, man. I, I don't think I could take any more. That was just so powerful. Let me know if you learned something. If this moved you, maybe converted you. I might be making new Mormons right now. You know, who could say? Um, let me know if you learned something. Or have some insight. Or want my martini recipe. Actually, it's pretty simple. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And I'll get through this book someday. Just not as much fun as the BOM. Bye.